We've been keeping really busy these days in getting ready for our shipping season, digging up lots of plants and healing them in. And uh, today I'd like to spend a little time with our hens getting caught up on the composting system a little, making sure that their needs are getting met. And I thought I'd share some updates with folks that are interested in our chicken composting system here in the early spring. There's a lot actively going on in here, so it's a little bit of a mess. We've got the crates lined up. I'll talk about those in more detail in a moment, uh, but those are, we've been actively using these to load truckloads of compost from the winter run, which is today's work, is to keep moving that compost along, getting that out and starting to fill nursery beds and air prune boxes. Uh, so they're, they're out and about. Can see some other things we're lining up here. We've got the, the bent hoops, which I've spoken about in other videos on how we bend these in a really informal way. I've really come to love this approach of pushing in the hoops every couple of feet and then dropping in slab wood cuts of uh, offcuts in this case of locust and then taking some compost that's been in here and filling that in. So we're starting to sketch at some of the garden beds and the nursery beds that will be in the chicken yard this year. We're not in a huge rush to plant them right away so we'll fill some, let the chickens have some fun and eat the worms and enjoy and then fill some more, let them work again and that system has been working really nicely for us. As we've gotten more mellow in the weather we've been trending more towards dumping the fresh or the incoming, maybe not so fresh, but the incoming food scraps just on the outside of the winter run, on the south side here. Uh, this way the hens can eat as much as they possibly can before it enters the pipeline, the composting pipeline in there. We still get freezing nights periodically, um, but it's not consistently freezing all the time. And so we are trying to actually actively avoid accumulating excess heat. And it's kind of a wild looking scene, but we've got that deep, deep pad of wood chips underneath all this. And you can see the darkness is all charcoal from the wood stove. And so tons of carbon underneath and the hens can actively kick through and work. And then we can get it, <laughs> as the rooster, we can get it integrated into the sides of this space to tumble along. We've been trialing some new ideas in here to increase the amount of interaction that the chickens can have with compost. You can see these rings here, which I can dig into and explain in a little bit when I set the tripod up. But we've found now that putting in some rings and filling them with compost lets the hens get a lot more work done, a lot more kicking and interacting and a lot more aeration of the compost. Excuse me, my friend, I'm trying to talk over here. This far end you can see has got much darker soil. That's where our more finished compost lives. Definitely not aged, perfect, pure compost, but really nice fertility. Hello, sir. And um, what we need to be working on is actively digging this out, getting it out to the gardens, getting it out to air prune boxes so we have room to send the next round of that. And this is deceivingly deep. You can imagine there's two of these deep that are buried underneath this on the far end. So it's probably almost two feet or more, almost three feet deep of this material, three and a half on that far end tumbling out through the back. I might start by offering up some nuts to our chickens. We have this bag of butternuts that were a little old and so now we're starting to crack them out and I found a neat system for doing it. So these are butternuts we collected a few years ago and they got a little damp or a little bit off. They're still in pretty good shape but we've got enough other ones that are in great shape that we're keeping for us and so I've been trying to figure out ways of cracking these open. This is some of the favorite foods, a nice treat for the hens and this friend here does a nice job so I've got a stake that holds in the, the compost holding rails and a good tap. Now for us that would be miserable because you'd have to pick through all the nut meat and the shell but the hens are down for doing that work and this will keep them active for quite a while. And you can see you get a rhythm of it and you can send a whole lot of nut meat <laughs> all over the winter run in just a few seconds. They put in the work when they see the sledgehammer come out and a bunch of nuts are getting cracked, they will put in a lot of effort to pick up every last little fleck. It's a ton of protein and mineral and vitamins for them and nice amount of fat as well. 
little work on our end, but a lot of nourishment for them and a great use for some nuts that have gotten a little older or a little less ideal for our eating. We've used these small uh, two by four welded wire rings in the chicken yard pretty extensively to fill with compost and grow some crops. We talked about this in the past and they're just laying around during the winter and I thought, boy, we could get a lot more uh, vertical complexity in the composting pipeline if we had these in this winter run. And so what I've been doing is periodically throughout this line, I'll just drop an empty ring and then fill it with compost that is at various ages. You can see there's a lot of heat in there and right now we're at a time where we're not we're not actively trying to preserve as much heat as possible. I'd actually like to see some of the heat dissipate and this vertical line might actually make it a little easier for the heat to get out. When we just start filling the ring, a few things happen. It really renews the hen's interest in what's happening. They start scratching in the areas where I've been digging. That makes sense. But then also the two by four welded wire is just big enough that they can kind of peck at the edges all throughout. And so they kind of use it as a dispenser to knock compost back into this area. They poke at it. You can see they can get through and act on it. Once I get it full enough, then the hens start jumping on top and they actively, actively kick material off and basically empty the whole ring again, but really aerate and integrate the compost. So I can take some more raw, unfinished compost, blend it with some more aged compost and really help the whole process move along. The other thing I've been enjoying about these rings, it not only lets the hens work at them from the side, lets a little bit more air come in, lets the active, somewhat overheated compost cool itself off, lets the hens kick material down from the top, all really nice. But then once it's been sitting for a little while, uh, a lot of pill bugs and worms and little critters can climb in there and be safe in the interior. I can slide the ring up and off and it tumbles apart and lets the hens actually kick it apart and get a whole bunch more food too. It only takes a few seconds to pull the ring, but that'll keep the hens active on this, flattening it back out, finding whatever sprouted within the last few days. I think the more of these rings we have, the better, because we can let some rest for a week, two weeks, three weeks, you know, upwards to a month if you can let a ring like that rest, then you start getting new generations of red wigglers, you get tons and tons of sprouts, you get more and more pill bugs but even just a few days and the soil life has increased and it keeps the hens super active for a while. So lots of different ways to activate and entertain the hens and then also get some really good work, some shredding and aeration from them. And that's kind of the trick with all this. How do we feed them and entertain them and get work done in the same stroke? For now, the work for me is to start to pile up, do one last hurrah of piling up this compost before it leaves here and integrate some slightly unfinished material. There's enough finish that I can add a little unfinished to kind of blend in. And it'll be a little bit warmer, a little bit extra nutrient loaded and really nice to start a bunch of seeds uh, this spring. So I'm going to work on that for a bit. I'm always amazed that even with all these hens that there can still be red wigglers in the system. They're going frantic erasing them before I can show you them. But uh, what I just noticed was where I dug over here, which is right up against the plastic, I guess it was hard enough for the hens to dig into this area for the last month or so. And pretty much anywhere that you put piles of compost that the hens can't fully obliterate, is an area where worms can not only occupy but actually expand their population. So there's this real value in having 
tons and tons of interaction that the hens can have with these composting systems and nooks and crannies, corners, rings, uh, milk crates, logs, debris, that they can't fully get to every last spot. And then we can free choice, give it back to them, let them eat all that excess protein and mineral, uh, but have new spots, like maybe I won't dig from that corner so that the worm population there can really expand again. So it's kind of like this little dance of maintaining those populations while still giving the hens almost daily access to worms, even in the winter. Takes a little bit of work, but uh, a lot of joy in there too. We could just be taking this material and loading it directly into crates onto the truck and up to our other site or out to a high tunnel. It's pretty close. Uh, I'd call it good enough, finished enough, but there's certainly little sprouts that remain and some red wiggler, active red wigglers that the hens could get some good food value from. So we'll let them enjoy that. Little pill bugs, little bips here and there. I think for the most part, the eggs of the red wigglers, they don't catch, or if they do, they catch some small subset. And so when this leaves from here, it generally begets lots of red wigglers anyway. So we're okay with them hammering the population at the end of this line. But we'll just keep grabbing more material from here, a little from there, a little from the far end, basically homogenizing the end of this pipeline into a nice, tall, unstable vertical pile for the hens to smooth out. And then the next time we interact with it, we'll be having it go directly into crates, knowing that the hens had a chance to grab every bit of food that they could have from it for the last, you know, month or so. That's about maybe two months worth of material breakdown in this at the end of the line here. It'll be good to get this piled up and then in a few days get that all out of here because the next move I'd like to do is really move all of this material much further down the line, have this move much down, much further down the line, open it up, let it air out. You can see in this area, there's a lot more thermophilic bacteria. The, uh, the white is not fungal, it's a uh, bacteria. So this is probably just a bit too hot. It's a little sour smelling and opening it up, getting some more air, having the chickens kick it apart up in these rings, kicking it apart up there, adding in some wood chips as well and some charcoal will get this breakdown process to be a little bit healthier and have a little bit more food value for them. It's not toxic or bad for them, it's just not ideal. Once we get to like 80 degrees, warm, moist, but mellow, that's where it's a real sweet spot and the most soil life and the most nutrition for the hens gets liberated. Uh, so the more we can move this along, the better. As per usual, the design and evolution of the design keeps changing in little subtle ways and i don't think that that's a bad thing it's uh, the design process can take its sweet time in a system like this i've said this before each time you screw up or you decide what you thought was a good path wasn't and you undo it the hens have a chance to interact with a ton more stuff and that is a huge benefit to them. So try things, decide that they weren't great or they're okay, but they need evolution and know that the hens will be happy with each iteration. I'm gonna get back to piling some stuff up, see if I can find a few more of these rings. Maybe we put in one or two more in here. I really like this little additional layer of uh, structural complexity for them. 
and let me know in the comments if you have some questions or concerns and hope you're doing well where you are and if you're thinking about getting into raising chickens with a composting system that it's working in good ways let's have some dialogue about how it's working for you and thanks for coming along for this specific dive into the tail end of our winter composting line and how we get it finalized so that it's ready to go but making sure that hens have enjoyment all the way <laughs>